In movies, crossing the cosmos looks like routine. Someone pulls a lever, the ship makes a strange noise and vanishes in a flash, as if light were a shortcut. In reality, physics is less permissive and charges a high price for every kilometer traveled. The main obstacle appears right in the first serious question every space project must answer. How do you move a spacecraft across absurd distances while spending as little energy as possible? Decades of research have already given us alternatives to traditional chemical rockets. Many brilliant ideas have been tested, others remain on paper awaiting better materials, budget, and time. Even so, it's worth asking whether we're looking for the solution in the right place. What if the answer didn't depend on exotic engines, fanciful reactors, or unprecedented fuels, but on a force humanity has known and used for millennia? Every space trip begins with the same requirement, energy. In simple terms, you need enough thrust to reach the destination. Science fiction sidesteps this bill with creative shortcuts like warp drives, hyperspace, and engines that would look magical under today's laws. They're great storytelling devices, but for now, they don't exist outside the screen. Revolutionary discoveries could appear tomorrow and redefine everything, but it's likely our generation won't see an engine that breaks the known barriers of physics. That doesn't mean we'll be stuck forever in the backyard of the solar system. It means we might need to feed spacecraft in another way. And the clue to this alternative appears when we look backward, not forward. For a good part of history, humanity crossed oceans using oars and, above all, sails. Wind-driven ships traveled immense routes without carrying fuel in the hold. The secret was to harness nature's forces, orchestrating canvas and rudder with skill and patience. That logic is still true today. Sailboats still cross seas, using only the air moving around us. What makes the wind blow? Differences in heating on Earth's surface create regions of high and low pressure. Warm air rises, cool air sinks, and this dance constantly seeks balance. At the center of this mechanism is the sun, the source that powers climate, winds, and life. In other words, sea sails have always been, in a way, solar-powered. If that recipe worked so well at sea, why not adapt the principle to space? The comparison raises another essential question. The ocean is vast, but space is almost a borderless abyss. Out there, the vacuum reigns. There's no air to push sails, and no waves to favor inertia. And chemical rockets, with all due respect to their incredible engineering, quickly show their limitations when the goal is a neighboring star. Apollo, the space shuttle, and even SpaceX's most modern vehicles depend on burning tons of propellant just to escape Earth's gravity. Visiting other planets is already challenging with this approach. Reaching another star becomes almost impractical. That's why many serious people study alternative paths, nuclear propulsion, ion engines, concepts involving antimatter, all promise efficiency gains, all carry enormous obstacles. Some demand too much fuel, others still don't deliver enough thrust, and there are those that run into technological barriers far from being overcome. Think of Proxima Centauri, our closest stellar neighbor, a little over four light years away. With current methods, that distance turns into a wall. Then, the inevitable question arises. If conventional engines won't take us there, what can? Among modern technologies, ion engines are often cited as fuel efficiency champions. They accelerate slowly, using electric fields to eject ions and produce continuous thrust. Given time and energy, a probe with this system can indeed reach impressive speeds, far beyond what a chemical rocket can maintain. The problem shows up in logistics. You need a noble gas, usually xenon, as reaction mass, and you simply can't carry enough xenon for decades of effective acceleration on an interstellar trip. For now, this path is excellent for missions within the solar system, but it still doesn't solve the crossing between stars. Another idea that pops up now and then is to use the fastest spacecraft we've ever built as a reference. With a record speed, could we at least visit the neighborhood of the galaxy? The Parker Solar Probe, for example, is today's speed champion, diving near the sun at more than 690,000 kilometers per hour. It sounds absurd, and it is. Even so, at that incredible pace, the trip to Proxima Centauri would take thousands of years, on the order of more than 70 centuries. 
Sending a probe now would mean waiting countless generations for a meaningful data return. It's clear that continuing to throw fuel at the problem won't fix it. Maybe the answer lies in a different push, one that doesn't run out, doesn't need to be stored on board, and doesn't weigh anything. This is where a concept enters that's as elegant as a haiku and as persistent as morning light, the solar sail. Instead of engines, it uses radiation pressure. The sun emits photons non-stop. Each photon has no rest mass, but it carries energy and momentum. When it strikes a highly reflective surface, it transfers a tiny push. It's minuscule, almost imperceptible in moments, yet relentless. Unlike a rocket that burns fuel and soon runs out, the solar sail accelerates little by little, but without interruption. Given enough time, this continuous acceleration can lead to speeds chemical engines could never sustain. For the magic to work, the sail needs to be ultralight, resistant to the space environment, and most of all, very reflective. The more light it reflects, the more thrust turns into motion instead of heat. And that's not all. Piloting a solar sail is like sailing on the open sea. By changing the sail's angle relative to the beam of light, the craft changes direction, rounds trajectories, and performs fine maneuvers. In other words, the same light that pushes also guides. The engine and the rudder are essentially the same thing. The best part? This isn't pure theory. In 2010, the Japanese space agency placed the Ikaro spacecraft in space, equipped with a solar sail that unfurled without needing fuel. The probe passed by Venus, operated for years, and showed that light pressure is indeed usable for navigation. With gravitational assistance, it reached speeds in the tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, respectable numbers that could grow even more with larger projects and more advanced materials. In 2019, LightSail 2, a planetary society initiative, used sunlight to raise its orbit around Earth proving it's possible not only to be pushed, but also to actively control trajectory with a sail. In 2024, NASA tested a sail of about 9 meters on a mission that confirmed subtle, measurable acceleration. One of the booms deformed and brought challenges, which is normal for new technologies, but the knowledge gained was valuable. These practical results show the idea works. However, if the goal is to reach another star, sunlight alone may not be enough. Intensity drops with distance, and, the farther we go, the weaker the pressure becomes. So the proposal arises to turbocharge the system with high-power laser beams fired from Earth. In 2016, Breakthrough Starshot was proposed, an ambitious program conceived by Yuri Milner, alongside names like Stephen Hawking and Mark Zuckerberg. The goal is to accelerate tiny sails to meaningful fractions of the speed of light, something like 20%, so that a probe reaches Proxima Centauri in about two decades. The extra push would come from a colossal array of coordinated lasers, concentrating energy for a short period, enough to deliver a gigantic initial shove. The price tag for an endeavor of this scale would be in the billions. Even so, we're not talking about fiction. Lasers can, in principle, push a sail exactly as sunlight does, only much more intensely and directionally. Installing emitters in space would help, but would hardly reach the power of a structure anchored on the ground with easier maintenance and abundant energy. It would be necessary to coordinate an immense array, possibly kilometers across. The beam wouldn't go around slicing everything. Within the atmosphere, there would be safety protocols to prevent anything from crossing the line of fire. In the vacuum, the risk is minimal, and all the energy would go to what really matters, accelerating the sail. Suppose such a mission lifts off. Much of the acceleration would happen right at the start, while the beam still keeps the craft within reach. After departure, control depends on subtle adjustments to the sail's angle, and an autonomous architecture capable of making decisions without a human hand at every step. The light reaching the vehicle diminishes with distance, which makes the initial pointing crucial. And when the probe approaches the target star, the reverse phase appears, decelerating. The idea is to turn the sail to face the local light. The pressure that once pushed now breaks, allowing flybys and, who knows, even orbital insertion in future missions with more complex designs. All of this must be automated, because the communication time with an object light years away is far too large for real-time control. Can we dream bigger? What if, instead of tiny probes, we talked about crude vehicles? The scale becomes monumental. A ship with people would require a sail kilometers wide, 
manufactured and assembled in space, along with a robust hull to shield the crew from radiation and micrometeoroids. Life support would have to be redundant and self-sufficient for years or decades. Prolonged absence of gravity is a known medical problem and would need mitigation, perhaps by rotating the craft to create artificial gravity. Each of these pieces opens up a universe of its own challenges, but notice something important. The propulsion principle, the idea of using light to gain speed, doesn't depend on theoretical miracles. It has already been demonstrated on a small scale. Historically, once someone proved it was possible to cross the Atlantic, a new era of exploration began. The unknown calls, and humanity has a track record of answering. With solar sails, we have for the first time a plausible way to navigate space without carrying fuel in the tank. Instead of trying to break fundamental laws, we take advantage of something the universe offers us all the time, photons traveling in all directions. That doesn't mean ignoring the dangers. Even uncrewed probes must face high-energy particles and interstellar dust impacts at extreme speeds. Projects will have to consider shielding, trajectories that minimize risks, and materials capable of lasting for long periods. None of this is trivial, but much of it is engineering, not magic. The most beautiful thing about this concept is its simplicity. A sail, a steady light source, and patience. It's counterintuitive to accept that such a weak push could produce such fast journeys, but it's precisely the effect of accumulating acceleration over time that works in our favor. From the moment you don't need to stop for refueling, the horizon broadens. It's the same logic as the great sailing ships that circled the globe without engines, simply reading the sky, feeling the wind, and trimming the sails according to the currents. There is still a long road between experiments in Earth orbit and a flotilla of sails crossing to other stars. We need to master the manufacture of giant structures in space, create highly autonomous navigation systems, design reliable and safe laser arrays, and, if the ambition is to carry people, reinvent practically every subsystem of a spacecraft. Even so, something essential has already happened. We took the first step and learned to extract motion from an ocean of light. The Parker Solar Probe showed what gravity and solar aerodynamics can do. Icaros, LightSail 2, and NASA's more recent tests prove that solar sails are not a distant dream. Starshot, in turn, sketches a bold horizon that, if funded and refined, can shorten centuries into decades. Maybe conquering the stars doesn't depend on a technology that looks like it leapt from a work of science fantasy. Maybe the answer lies in going back to basics, using simple, abundant forces, adding small accelerations until they become great journeys. We spent millennia crossing seas with wind and taut fabric. Now the sea to be crossed is darker and colder, but the logic remains. With the right sail and a steady light source, we can cover distances that today seem unreachable. If in the future, we look back and recognize the moment this journey began, it will likely look less like the roar of engines and more like the silence of a gleaming sheet unfurling in the vacuum. The first impulse comes softly, almost imperceptibly, but it doesn't cease. And so, little by little, the craft gains speed, tracing a route no chemical rocket could sustain for so long. Every second, trillions of photons strike the sail and add a fraction of motion. The sum of those fractions is what can take us beyond the familiar limit of the planets we know. In the end, we don't need to conquer space with brute force. It's wiser to learn how to talk to light. And when humanity learns to converse with a force of nature, new routes open up. Today, that learning is underway. Sails are being tested, lasers are being studied, materials are evolving. It may take time, but the heading is set. The crossing won't come from a single spectacular leap, but from a sequence of solid advances. That's how science has always moved, and that's likely how we'll get where no ship has flown before. If this vision excites you as much as it excites us, stick around, share this video with anyone who loves space exploration, and tell us in the comments what kind of sail mission you'd like to see first. Fast probes to the neighboring stars, or giant sails charting the outskirts of our solar system. Whatever the priority, one thing is already clear. We've learned to sail the ocean of light, and the tide is in our favor. Leave your like and subscribe. Thank you, and see you next time.